Last time on HTML Canvas, Radu showed you how to make a simple web page with text, a link, an image, a button, and a canvas. Duh, it's the name of the course. He showed you the three languages of the web, CSS for the page style, HTML for the page structure, and JavaScript for the page functionality. From now on, this course will focus on one HTML element, the canvas element, and on the JavaScript programming language. Now get ready, second lesson's about to start. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. Because in this course we focus on the canvas, I'm going to teach you the fastest way to set up a canvas project. Here I have an empty HTML file in its own folder. And I'm going to type canvas and let's give it the width equal to say 400 pixels and height is equal to 400 pixels. And let's close this canvas element. And actually, we now have a web page here, if you refresh, with a canvas element, but we just don't see it because it's transparent. And we can make it visible if we want by typing here some inline CSS. Style is equal to background color column yellow. And let me put the width and height here on the next line for clarity. So I'm going to save this and refresh the page. And now you can see the canvas there. In real projects, you should have a proper code structure like we did in the first video, where we separated JavaScript, HTML, CSS in different files and so on. But here we just experiment with the canvas. So it's okay to be a little bit sloppy like this. Now, if I'm going to use the microscope to look at the pixels here, I remind you that white just means that all three small lights are on. And if we go up to where yellow is, we have blue missing. So it's just red and green that is on. And it's really interesting that this is not really yellow what we're looking at. And Vsauce has a really great video on this topic. But anyway, let's learn how to draw something on this canvas using JavaScript. So we open here a script tag like this and let's close it so we don't forget to do it afterwards. And now inside the script tag, I'm going to write element is equal to get element by ID. And here we're going to need to give an ID to our canvas. Let's say that will be my canvas like this. Let me just add it here. ID is equal to my canvas. And I put the style here on its own line. And going back down here, I'm going to access the so-called canvas context. So I'm getting the 2D context from this canvas element. And there are several to choose from. You can even do 3D things here. But in this course, I'm only going to focus on the 2D elements. So this context now has all the methods that we need to draw on the canvas. For example, we can use it to move to a location. You can think about this like putting the pen over the paper somewhere at some location. In this case, 100x and 300y. And now line 2 let's say 300x and 300y. And what we need to do now to see this line is actually called the stroke method of the canvas context, like this. So save the file, refresh, and now you see a line, but maybe it's not where you expect it to be. And that's because the 0, 0 point is actually in the top left corner here. Let's move up here now before the stroke and draw a few more lines in this shape. For example, let's make this line right here, save the file, refresh the page, 
and now it looks like this. You can turn this into a triangle really easy if you just connect back to the starting point, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna continue and draw another line like this, because I want to show you that the shape can have as many lines as you want. Let's add another one here. And another one connecting to the starting point. It looks a bit like a house now. Okay, but these were lines and uh, we can use other methods as well. For example, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to draw a circle next. I'm going to write context.arc. This is the name of the method we'll use to draw a circle. And here we enter the x coordinate of the center of the circle. I'm just going to put it in the middle of the canvas and the y also 200. Now the radius of the circle is going to be 50 pixels. And then I'm going to add two more numbers here. For now, let's just leave these be 0 and 7 like this. And to see the circle, we also have to call stroke here. Save the file, refresh the page, and maybe it's not exactly what you were expecting. Like, what is happening here with this with this line. And the thing is that we didn't stop drawing the previous shape really, and then it just connected to where this circle started from. To fix this, I'm actually going to type here ctx.begin path, like this. And now when you refresh, everything works as expected. And even though it's not needed, I really recommend that you add the begin path always when starting a shape, even for this first one right here. So refreshing doesn't change anything now, but in this way you never forget to add this begin path when starting to draw a new shape. Now let's see what these two numbers are. Let's try experimenting with them. What if we change this 7 into a 1? What do we get next? I'm gonna refresh and you see only part of the circle. What happens if we put here a 2? We see a bigger part of the circle. And uh, let's put 3 as well. And it's almost half a circle. And the thing is that this becomes half a circle if you type here 3.14. And this is the value of pi. So if you think about the length of a circle, it's 2 pi r. Now in this method call right here, we're already specifying the radius. So we just need to specify the other part here. Pi r is half a circle, but 2 pi r is going to give you the full circle like this. And People tend to use a constant value here. You can type math dot pi. In this way, it's clear that you're referring to a circle. Pi has everything to do with circles, really. So the code still works if you save and refresh right now. And the other number here is the starting point. Like if you're going to input 1 instead, then the circle is going to start here now, going clockwise like this. And if you add 2, then it's going to start from this part right here. So this arc method is more useful. It's not just for drawing circles, but other things as well. Let's leave it as a full circle for now. It kind of looks like a birdhouse. I'm going to give it a base and teach you a quick way for drawing rectangles. So we go here and say ctx begin path ctx rect 100, 300, 200, and 20. It's going to have a small height. So in the rect method here, we have the top left corner of the rectangle, and then this is the width and the height. Let's save this file, refresh, and now the birdhouse has a base. What do you think? Can you go on with this project? Can you make it have a more interesting roof? Or maybe even draw a bird? 
It's not that difficult, especially if you draw a grid like this on paper first, and then just take out coordinates and plug them into the code. Try it out, and see you guys next time.